in the category of it came out of nowhere, but at the same point in time, it was a surprise to absolutely no one. We saw the news overnight that Tom Billington, AKA better known to wrestling fans around the world as the Dynamite Kid, had passed away at the age of 60. I think all of us in the know as wrestling fans knew that Dynamite had been in a bad way physically for a very, very long time. And it wasn't that surprising to hear that he had finally kicked the bucket. That'd be harsh, but he did. He died. I'm surprised it had happened already, frankly. Um, so, you know, when you think about the Dynamite Kid, it's, it's a complicated legacy to look back at. Because on the one hand, when you focus on the professional wrestler himself, here was a guy that roids, no roids, whatever. He was still a small dude in a land of giants. And he was able to carve out his own niche. You've got so many fans around the world that will talk about the matches that he and Tiger Mask had in Japan in the early 80s and how revolutionary they were and how great they were and how awesome they were and how they still truly stand the test of time. And to a certain degree, they do. And also talking about a guy in Dynamite who was a part of a very, very popular tag team during the mid-80s at the height of the WWF and their global expansion him and Davey Boy Smith, the British Bulldogs. And for me, as a little, little, teeny, tiny schleggy, I loved the British Bulldogs. You know, it was Davey Boy, it was Dynamite, they were a great tag team, they were a great technical team, they had great chemistry, great execution. Then you had the frickin' Bulldog Matilda with them. I mean, they were just cool. Like, when you look at wrestling now, that's supposed to kind of be designed towards kids. You don't have some of those acts like you had with the British Bulldogs. Obviously kind of corny, cheesy baby faces, yes. But at the same token, these guys were freaking awesome. And they had the damn dog. As a kid, that's pretty freaking cool. Now, obviously, injuries played a little bit of a role with Dynamite and all the stuff he did to his body over the years. Um, not to mention the steroids, the cocaine, and the other assorted vices that uh, he started to break down and he broke down very quickly. And in later years of his life, he lost use of his leg, he was in a wheelchair, had a stroke. All that damage eventually caught up to him. And it's, again, not that surprising because he was a midget trying to survive in a land of giants. You look at Dynamite Kid, though, ironically enough, there are a lot of guys that pattern themselves after him in some degree to this day, even if they don't realize it. Some do, some do not, but a lot of them want to be a Dynamite Kid type of guy. A lot of these smaller guys do. And if Dynamite Kid was a wrestler at the height of his power today, he'd probably be a big deal for the hardcore wrestling fan base. Uh, Kenny Omega could probably suck a cock. Um, Daniel Bryan might not be as big of a deal because if you're really being honest about it, Dynamite and what he could do and the perfection with his technical skill and kind of no-nonsense uh, Mike skills, couldn't have him, never did. Charisma, eh. That's not what cats care about nowadays anyways with wrestling, it seems like. They just want to see guys that hit spots and do moves and Dynamite most certainly was that. So, in some ways, I feel like he was ahead of his time in that as the business has gradually gotten smaller over the past 15 years, he would have been a vastly bigger deal and a much bigger star than he was back in the 80s, even though he was in his own right a star. So, I understand why a lot of people will be talking about Dynamite on social media and talking about how great of a wrestler he was and how great of a talent he was and how much they enjoy his matches of the past and... Uh, feel his influence and impact on the business of professional wrestling. And that's understandable, and all of that is true. But we get to this kind of dangerous place where all of a sudden a guy dies, and we completely ball wash him. I, a perfect example of that is President George Herbert Walker Bush. Just because the guy died does not mean that he was a great man. Sure, he was a World War II hero. Nobody can take that away from him. But when you look at some of the 
the specific things he did over the years, what he was involved in, just because the guy was kind of had a calm demeanor and presented himself as kind of congenial and so forth, does not mean he was a nice man or does not mean he was a good man. And you can't just sit there and talk about all the positives and not talk about this whole entire part of that individual's legacy because ultimately that was who they were. That's not sitting there and speaking ill of the dead. That's not kicking a man when he can't defend himself. That's an accurate representation of the entire individual. If anything, it is disrespectful to them, the individual who is no longer there to defend themselves. It is disrespectful to their legacy. It is disrespectful to those that are potentially impacted to only focus on the positive. And when you think about Tom Billings and the Dynamite Kid, there is plenty of negative too. There is a big part of this that makes you kind of sit there and say, karma caught up with him, the son of a bitch got what he deserved. You hear all the stories over the years about him pissing and shitting in people's bags and spiking people's drinks and drugging people's food, shooting steroids in damn Matilda, bullying people backstage. Like, who the hell was Dynamite to sit there and be bullying anybody? But yet he was a big bully backstage until Jacques Rougeau hit him with a roll of fucking quarters right in the fucking mouth and Dynamite lost a bunch of teeth. This was a guy that you've heard the stories, I'm sure, talk about he would sit there with an unloaded gun and hold it under his wife's chin while she was asleep. When he woke up, he'd be like, hey, one day this will fucking be loaded. Allegations of rape and bullying and all these different things. He was not a nice guy. He was not a good guy. Sure, he most certainly was a really good in-ring wrestler, yes. But we should not automatically hold him up on a pedestal and we should not just pay attention to that part because there's an entirely different part of him that was not good. That is something that we should not be looking up to. We should look at him as a standard of what not to do, how not to conduct yourself as a professional, as a professional wrestler, frankly, as a husband, a father, a fucking human being. So for all these people who are going to sit there and do all this ball washing of dynamite, for the wrestling portion of it, that's fine, that's fair, because that was a part of who he was. But we also know there was this whole different side to him. He had a self-destructive tendency of personality, all the roids he shot up in himself over the years, all the drugs that he did over the years, not taking care of his damn body, taking all these ridiculous chances. Maybe he felt like at the time that's what he needed to do. He was a part of a different era, a different place, a different time, and that is also true. But ultimately, at some point in time, those chickens come home to roost. So I can sit there and think about the great things that he did as a professional wrestler and also look at him as a human being and say he was a piece of shit. I feel no sympathy that he is gone. I feel like his chickens did indeed come home to roost. He got exactly what he could deserve. Karma bit him in the ass. If you don't like it, that's too damn bad. But what I'm not going to do is ball wash a dude just because he's dead. Let's be real and let's be honest about who these people are, both the good and the bad. And if even half of what we've heard over the years about Dynamite is true, it is no great loss to the world, believe me.